And so this brings me to our next speaker. He'll be talking about AI and quality control, real use cases and best practices. It's a pleasure to welcome Tobias Lehrer Ruland from GFT. He's over five years of experience in IoT data and AI projects as a consultant and as a project manager. So the next 20 minutes are yours. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. <laughs> so hi, um, I'm going to be talking about uh, AI and quality control, especially in manufacturing processes. And to be honest, quality control, we heard some topics about that already uh, today and yesterday. It's about optical quality control. So whenever product is produced and you have to determine whether it's okay or not okay. And I, I'll spare you with the marketing stuff and, 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 and uh, marketing banners and I want to focus on really the use cases and, and the best practices or success factors that we uh, faced in our project. So pretty, pretty straightforward agenda, um, only two to three slides per uh, topic, so I'll, I'll keep it short. So let's start. How, how did optical quality control evolve over time? And let's start with a story or let's uh, quite cool anecdote. Who of you knows Oscar Keller? That's actually quite tricky because some, some obviously know that guy or know somebody named that. Uh, Oscar Keller, I mean, I didn't know him as well and I didn't know the story but um, uh, two years ago, but he was working in the uh, 1920s uh, in, in, in for Ford Motor Company in the final assembly, in the final inspection. So he was checking the cars that have been produced and uh, was checking if they were as expected or not. Let's put it that way. And whenever he checked it and it was okay, he mentioned, he marked the, the cars and the documents with his initials, which were okay. So that's basically or supposedly the, uh, the story behind the origin of the, the term okay. Obviously, if you check Wikipedia, there's two, uh, at, least 11, at least in Germany, there's 11 other uh, uh, solutions or, or stories behind that, but that, that matches my, my presentation quite well, so I, I love that story. So. And it shows quite well how, how optical inspection started, or, um, let's say 100 years ago, or even before that. Actually, I took one example, which is quite crucial these days, but um, it's, it's a nice one, and I, we have a great project in that topic, which is the production or manufacturing of glass bottles. So let's, let's think of how can you uh, determine the quality in that case. I mean, there's two options so far. Well, there's definitely two options, which is one, you, you, you can do it manually. I mean, you can check the bottles, obviously not when they're hot, but when they're cooled down, you can check them. So that's quite error prone because Obviously, if you've worked or worked in a, in a production for eight hours, then you know after seven hours you won't be detecting all defects, right? It's quite time consuming and traceability, which is quite crucial in some areas, especially automotive sector, is hard to maintain. The other topic, which is flying around for several years already or decades, is image processing. So, built for arbeiting in German or um, so basically, you have a camera and you have a, a software or model that is like or software that is um, analyzing the pictures, the images, and you determine whether it's okay or not okay. Usually, that is tailored to um, to one use case or one product or one variant, and it's quite hard to adjust that um, to to other ones or other products or lines. And implementation costs for that are usually quite high. So what is our experience or our next level or next level solution? It's visual inspection AI. So it's image processing powered by AI. And a few other things in that, but I'll come to that. So let's look, take a look at how this works. And actually on the top left, you can already see with who we are doing that. In terms of data, I guess that one is quite well known and also quite uh, maybe best in class. So visual inspection, usually you have to have a camera as well. So basic setup is similar. You have to have uh, raw data, which is in this case images. You have to analyze them. Maybe you need some meta information, like which production order, which part you're producing right now. And at some point you will have, that's actually in the project a quite tricky part, but uh, anyway, you'll have couple hundred thousand pictures and then you label them and train them. So you have your training lab, which is in our case GCP. Um, at some point you have a quite good model. So some cases it's not so good. Sometimes it's, it's quite good from the start. So you have a model where you can use and uh, deploy on-prem or uh, in the cloud and, and, and determine the, in, in the production line how, how the production is performing on, and uh, how the products look like. So that's 
simplified to the most easiest way of obviously. So we could talk about it more a uh, lot um, longer, but let's let's keep it to that way. I mean, that's anyway. That topic is still quite uh, hard to, to catch because there's so many parties involved, right? There's, you have to have cameras and sensors, which is a hardware topic. You have to have really good uniform uh, un uh, illumination, and otherwise your pictures, your images won't be uh, okay for the, the, the use case. You have to have domain know-how and the data, obviously. So some, some of our customers, they don't even have the pictures or images yet, so you have to ha find a way to do that in a way that is similar to the later on production. You have to have an AI model and uh, infrastructure, so um, with GCP that comes in quite handy. And the crucial thing about that is, what helps you the best model, AI model, if in the end you only get okay or not okay on a screen? You have to have a process or you have to have it implemented so that in the end a robot or there's a crossing on left side, there's the, the scrap parts, on the right side there's the good parts. So you have to implement or integrate that and that is usually a quite crucial topic or tricky topic. So let, let's check some practical use cases about that. Actually, I brought two. So that's one, I, I love that one. I, I love, maybe that's because I love uh, sweet stuff. It's about, I refer to that as the cookie case. So imagine you go to the supermarket and you buy cookies and with cream filled um, and there's not enough cream in it, right? So that's, that's the best, uh, the worst thing that can happen. So maybe you even get as a producer, you get a, a shitstorm on, on social media about it. Could be worse, there could be screws and bolts in, but let's let's keep that out. So um I guess use case or the, the 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 challenge is quite obvious. So in this case, the customer wanted to detect whether the cookies, the creams are quite uh, probably filled and also like determine like how much it was filled. And as you can see in the top right, there's a lot of cookies passing by quite fast. I mean, there's there's automotive cases that are a lot faster, but it's quite tough. And obviously, you can't see inside yet. So, uh, I mean, not with a normal camera. So you have to have a, a infrared camera. So in this case, we set up the infrared camera, choose the 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 the, the, the harness and stuff, and then took the pictures, trained the model, and got a really, really good um, result out of it. So let's say 98% within a PUC. Actually, we, we've heard a lot about PUCs, but you definitely need it to prove the feasibility of, of it. And in this case, for this customer, we already moved it to, to the rollout and uh, are working on the automation topic that I just mentioned. Next one, as I mentioned, this is, I mean, this is a quite energy intensive one, so it's, it's tricky, but anyway, this, is, this was a game changer actually for this customer. So they approached us um, and said, okay, usually we, I mean, right now, as of right now, we, tra we, we check the bottles at the end of the production. So whenever the bottles are cold and there have been several steps involved between that, and I mean, the earlier detect, you detect defects, the better. So that was the challenge. And, and Bottom right, you can see the first setup, how we did it with also with infrared cameras. And the challenge was, it's way more than 12 defect types. So you can imagine there can be uh, scratches or you can, there, there can be a dent over here, which is horrible <laughs> if, you, if, you get the, if you buy a cola and then uh, um, get a, um, get start bleeding when drinking the cola or whatever. So that's a crucial topic. And Together with GCP, we found a solution that can detect def all these defects, unless the ones on the on the bottom, because obviously by design you can't detect if it's standing on 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 on, a, on the surface. We can detect all of these with a tremendous uh, detection rate. I mean, there was a lot of blood and sweat in the project, even in the PUC, to do that. But it's it's a great example. And and feel free after the the presentation to to come. I can I can show more about this topic. So, I mean, basically you could say, well, you could still count pixels and stuff like that as has been done 20 years before, but what is the, what is the benefit out of AI? And why does it help? This customer is not only producing, I don't know, beer bottles, but many, many other ones as well. So usually it's quite tough to match all these use cases and find a solution that is easily maintainable and operationable. And Usually you need someone or you need a supplier that, that, uh, um, that helps you with that, or is like really experts. The thing with we try to do together with GCP is you don't need data sci hardcore data scientists anymore, but even a guy like me, industrial engineer, can do this stuff, and I can, so 
trust me. <laughs> so it's not that difficult. So let's check like, what is the success factors out of it. Um, so I like that picture, I, actually I love it. Um, it. It shows the anatomy of an AI solution, an AI project. Usually you start with the POC, and, and I'm a fan of POCs. I'll explain why. But usually that's the, that's the thing above sea level, right? So it looks fine, everything, it's, it's doable, manageable. You, you make sure you leave out the corner cases and the hard stuff, because, well, it's a POC, it should be doable in several weeks. Well, and then at some point you have to do it. I mean, you have to do in Germany, you would say the Fleißarbeit. So you have to do the stuff for, I don't know, like first you, you do one case and then you have to do it for 20 other cases. So it's not the nice work and not some nice projects, but you have to do it. So, I mean, I'm not, um, this is Captain Obvious, right? So this, it's 15% that make it to the, to the last stage. And it's, uh, that's something we are still, a lot of companies and I would say in, in all over Europe or worldwide are struggling because you don't get it to the production or like operational state. Why is it still worth it to do that? I would say in, if for the glass bottle case, the, the solution we found together with them it's a game changer, right? So your production process is, is optimized by a huge step or a huge leap, so it's worth that. And then you will have a competitive advantage to your uh, competitors, and that's, that's worth. I mean, there's a risk, right? You could, you could fail after POC, and we have projects had that we said, we don't do it because AI might not be the right solution. Maybe there's an easier one with less effort and, and go for it. Or you, after the POC, you find out, well, you can't do it because you don't get the images right, or there's no, I don't know, like whatever, imagine it. So, but it's still worth it. That one is, is actually quite interesting. Um, we could talk about it for hours, I would say, but I, I, wanna, I wanna highlight the hardware topic and the, uh, the topic also about like com the different sectors that can, this can run in. Like in automotive sector, you would need maybe a cycle time of less than one second or even maybe a five seconds or whatever. So you have to have a really low latency. So where should you run your, your model? I mean, on the, on the left-hand side, you see, imagine there's a production facility or one production line, so, so you have your machines running and, and obviously your, your process that will take the, the images. So you could run it on a, in a camera. Glad, I'm glad we we're in 2022, so there's cameras that, can, that have the computing power like that and you can run your model on the camera. Obviously, there's fast interference, but it, it's a little more expensive than the ones that uh, the, the, the commodity ones. The other extreme is you run it in the cloud. To be honest, only a few do that <laughs> due to obvious reasons here in Germany because there could be an excavator outside and, and, and cutting the, the fiber lines or whatever, but you could do it like that. And in some cases, it's, it's okay to do that. So that's also a topic you have to cover up or you have to deal with in a POC and decide where you run it. And that's only one, one uh, part of these all the parties involved. So let's, let's take a look on the success factors. And I mean, this is something you heard of these last 30 hours quite often and, and also on other uh, things. So I, I wanna highlight the stuff that we found out and we faced and leave out the other stuff. But thing is, and that's something that is really crucial, you have to, you have to do it business value or value driven. So we had customers or prospects that said, well, let's do AI and, and let's do it, uh, try this out or let's try it with GCP. And, that's cool, I mean, you can make maybe 50K or whatever with the, with the POC or 20K, that's okay, but you won't get it, get beyond that. So if, you, if you're honest and you say, well, there's another solution that can do that in less effort, then go for it. And if you don't get a real realistic business case, and that's something we as a vendor or supplier usually like focus quite hard and, and also if the customer hates us, if you, we, we had, we heard, I heard of stories that, that they tried out and, and had an AI, AI POC and at the end they said, um, oh well, our cameras died or we have, uh, I don't know, uh, downtime somewhere else. Let's leave that. Maybe we come back to you or we, we do it in half a year. Thing is, nobody was taking care of by, like, if it succeeds, what is it helping us? We have to do that and that's something everybody should do. I mean, obviously, I mean, there's not many uh, experienced people with that, at least not enough, so that's, that's a topic I'll, I'll leave out. Um, expectation management is a topic, so some, some people still think that AI can do everything. 
and you just you just put a project and make powered by AI, and that's that's helping everything. So that's not not true, and that's something even for for the the expectation of a PUC, you have to manage. Even after PUC, in some cases, we said, okay, well, we have to stop it because it's not we, we won't we will never get it to the uh, operational mode. So you have to be honest, and you have to manage expectations. Hardware, I talked about that one as well. Um, yeah, sometimes it's tough to get data and, and like good data quality, but it's also no uh, no brainer, right? So I guess we heard a lot an, about MLOps. I'll leave that one out, but uh, obviously it's it's a, it's a crucial thing. I want to highlight one last thing, and that's that's uh, the place where GCP comes in. When an, engi an industrial engineer can do labeling and stuff and train a model like that, so you have obviously, obviously you have low code and no code uh, top uh, tools, then I would say AI is something is is on a on a crucial topic or a spinning point or whatever, so that that companies, bigger companies or smaller ones, also SMEs can can do that because you don't need an expert or you don't need to hire a data scientists to do it. So that's something I would say in the upcoming years that will that will really push or uh, push the AI topic and also topics like optical quality inspection. And it's definitely worth it. Trust me. There's there's projects that we we stopped, but there's so many others where it's it succeeded and it was a great success. So already 45 seconds above it. Um, I'll, I'll leave it with that. If you want to talk more about it, come to our booth or stand. And I'm, I'm looking forward to your questions. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Also, uh, thanks a lot for being uh, time conscious. Because um, if you, as a speaker, are, then we have time for questions. So I'm um, again looking at you. Are there any follow-up questions after this talk about the use cases or the work you do in general? Yeah. 